Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'm going to discuss a demo CNC business model utilizing micromanufacturing for profit. Now guys, when I talk about micromanufacturing, and you've heard me bring this term up a lot, it has absolutely nothing to do with the size of the equipment you've invested in. I don't care if your investment only yielded a Chinese CNC 3020 router or a Bridgeport Type Knee mill, which is more towards full-scale equipment. I'm discussing that term to really describe an unorthodox method of using the technology we have available and the precision we have available in smaller sized equipment to be extremely profitable by using leverage and becoming extremely efficient. Uh, CNC robotics really make your business way more efficient. Um, the efficiency goes through the roof and on top of that the overhead goes way down especially when you consider the, the actual machines that are available now to micromanufacture with. Um, this video is going to be a little bit longer because, again, I do have a lot of information to cover. Um, again, I picked an industry as a demo just to give you guys uh, a breakdown of what kind of profitability is out there. Again, I didn't cover everything in explicit detail. I'm not covering tooling costs and all that. Um, that's something that, again, you can look at yourself um, for whatever industry you're going into. But I will tell you this. If you take the numbers and you break down the numbers, everything I'm showing you here is accurate. So when you factor in all the cost of your tooling and even the overhead of, let's say, electric to run your machine and stuff like that, you are still going to be well, well ahead of the game of you using that old 1950s business mentality our fathers and mothers used of going out and renting or, or purchasing a brick and mortar facility to produce components in. So just take that into consideration as we go through this, this uh, tutorial. So I'm going to just jump right in and cover basically what I've got for you guys right here. Um, when I first did one of my listings, I wanted to go over a client of mine who basically, uh, he was really, really in depth in RC cars. He loved RC cars. He wanted to fabricate parts for RC cars. Matter of fact, I think he's a sponsored driver. Um, his name is uh, Jason and he sent, he actually put up a video on his own channel of him using my controller and you can see it over here right under the Chinese box that he replaced and he's using the controller on a Chinese based 6040 CNC. Again guys, real basic tabletop mill, really nice system when converted um, with a 1.5 kilowatt spindle and he's using it to mill out RC car components out of carbon fiber. So before we get into the details of the carbon fiber industry, I just want to clarify with you guys. Carbon fiber, yes, I know millions of people out there have talked about how dangerous it is to mill with. Guys, if you use a respirator, you're going to be fine milling carbon fiber. Millions of people have milled carbon fiber. It's all over the internet. Um, common sense prevails. You're dealing with a composite substrate. You have to be very careful when you're dealing with composite substrates because the mill generates uh, carbon fiber dust. You definitely don't want to breathe that, so use common sense. However, what's really interesting in this video, not to go into great detail about the safety, is the fact of a lot of people have watched this video, but I don't know if everybody is really paying attention to the amount of time it takes for Jason to actually cut out a, a ready-to-use RC car chassis with this system um, and again he's using a gecko g540 again you know real everything here is basic i don't I, I don't remember him actually i believe he's using 300 ounce steppers on that chassis so realistically he is going in cutting out and i did the time elapse it, it's about six minutes and nine seconds six minutes and nine seconds to cut out are basically a ready-to-use RC car chassis. Now, we have a couple variables here we don't know. I don't know the exact dimensions in the sense of uh, the width of the, ch the chassis he's actually cutting out. I don't know if this material is two mil or three mil. I'm assuming it's probably two mil because that's what's generally used in the RC car industry. Um, but again, we really don't know. What we do know is that it takes him six minutes and nine seconds, and I decided to do that in math terms, okay? If we just come over here to Google, and we look under Google Shopping. Google is a great resource because, of course, under their shopping section, it breaks down all the pricing on the Internet of anybody selling a component that, you know, maybe you want to manufacture. Um, the interesting thing is, again, I get a lot of guys that then say, well, wait a minute, what about patents and stuff like that? Well, in the RC industry, there's very, very few patents. Um, again, I have guys kind of snicker about the RC industry as far as an industry to actually build components in. And the thing I really want to direct your attention to and really take the smile off your face is to think about the fact of how fast 
drones have become the new fad. I mean, drones right now are massively used. The military are using them left and right. Um, they're just, it's an amazing uh, way for people to really get out there. And now they're using them for all types of uh, photography. They're doing surveying with them. I mean, it's, it's just amazing in the field that it's expanded as much as it has. A lot of people think it's just for kids. Nothing in RC anymore is just based around children. I mean, honestly, it's not. And when you look at the money invested, you know it's not just children. Um, but when you definitely look at these components and we go through and we identify, you know, chassis, you can see here a carbon fiber bottom chassis plate, which is nothing but a two-dimensional piece, just like what Jason was machining, sells for about 84 66 They all go in different price ranges based on the size of the chassis. A two-and-a-half mil uh, Cougar Schumacher, whatever that means, I guess that's a manufacturer of chassis, is $49. Okay, again, we don't know the length and the dimensions. However, if we look at Jason's video here, we can determine that a usable machining width on a 6040 Chinese mill is about 21 inches long by about 14 inches wide. Okay, so you can see that he's got more than ample inches here. He's not even close to the end of the table. So this chassis is obviously not that big. Um, but what I will tell you is that if he's using CAD CAM software with nesting, and what nesting is in your CAD CAM software, it allows you to place multiple components on a single piece of raw material for optimal machining with, with safety involved so that, when I say safety, so that you don't run into the other piece you've basically grouped it next to. Uh, nesting, I incorporate in my Bobcad V21 package because if you guys are ever going to do machining for profit, which I hope you do, um, it would be foolish not to, is that it allows you then to group all the parts as close together with safety in mind, that it would not damage the other part, and allow you to make as much money as possible on carbon fiber. Now guys, one of the things I want to point out about carbon fiber that is usually overlooked is the fact that carbon fiber is a substrate that really there is no waste. Carbon fiber can be used to reinforce different substrates. The powder that is produced from the machine milling it is really able to be used uh, again by just simply mixing it with some carbon fiber or excuse me epoxy resin and you can use it to once again you know formulate a uh, reinforcing structure on whatever you apply it to so you take that into consideration it's pretty amazing that they're really virtually on this entire sheet here there's absolutely no waste you can resell the powder you can resell all of the framing around the chassis that you can't use he can either grind that up into powder or he could sell it as reinforcement brackets or do micro machining on that and see what parts he can come out with to fabricate and use in other areas i mean ultimately once again no waste it's very important we say that because then your efficiency goes through the roof and once again the two terms we want to focus on is efficiency and overhead we're keeping our overhead extremely low because the manufacturing process on this again you're doing this without a brick and mortar location you're doing it in a very small environment typically your garage basement um, a storage unit I've had clients actually use storage units to machine in it, it's amazing what you can do the big thing here is that this entire sheet whatever it cost them there's no waste here so as we go through and we look at these prices and really what I want to look at is really just different things he's machining a carbon fiber chassis so I decided to pick a part other than what he was machining just for profitability we're gonna look again this is a two-dimensional part these are carbon fiber RC car shock towers okay very common part you can see on Google here it's got the price it's 2749 973 shipping again it also breaks down other retailers that are selling these parts on eBay believe it or not they're going for 3795 a set um, if we come over here and we want to be really good with business we realize that in RC car and other industries if you bundle parts together that are usable together typically you're adding more value which in turn is going to be more prop more of a consistent earner with your customers because your customers feel they're getting more value and of course you know it's going to save the money in the long run they'll typically spend it so if we look over here at the rear chassis brace which is only made out of two mil carbon it's twelve dollars and eighty six cents once again we don't know the variable on the shipping but we'll say it's twelve dollars and eighty six cents over here these shock towers are a little more between the two of them we're going to be looking at just slightly over fifty dollars so I decided to make a spreadsheet Components retail cost, if we were to decide to fabricate shock towers with that brace, 
is fifty dollars and eight cents and the only shipping price that we have that we can actually accrue in there is going to be from the shock towers themselves because that's all we have reflected in Google shopping but if we come over here and then we also go to another site because we realize we want to deal with some really good quality carbon fiber we're gonna come over here to dragon plate and guys I'm not associated with dragon plate but one thing I will say is I always look for companies that use ISO 9001 certified uh, materials because again that's usually typically what you'll find in most government um, contracts that are used and again your quality there is impeccable it usually will exceed most of the general factories that are producing these parts anyways um, if you look here you can buy carbon in different um, textures you can buy a textured matte gloss um, overall finish on this gloss is going to yield um, probably the best look and again uh, really what RC car industry is looking for Price on this component is $111. It's going to cost $22.50 for the gloss. You're looking at a 3 mil, 12 by 24 inch plate of carbon. Now, we know with the machining capability of 6040, you probably cut off 3 inches on the end, but as already stated, if you had to cut off a little material, it really doesn't matter because there's no waste on carbon. Okay, so maybe it not, it's not going to produce the shock tower or the brace. Maybe it will produce a brace. just depends on how you want to do it. If you cut the end off, you can machine that piece too, or you could sell it as an individual component. Totally up to you. However, I decided to come in here and do a breakdown in the spreadsheet. Now, raw material cost, we see a 12 by 24 inch sheet of 3 mil gloss carbon fiber sheet. It's going to run us $156. I threw in an arbitrary number for shipping at $22.50, which is probably too much. Um, carbon fiber weighs nothing, as we know, and the substrate is extremely strong. Um, overall, we'd be at a price of about price point of about an initial investment of $156. Okay, now guys, once again, I'm going to bring out in detail because I do have people that will watch these videos and want to nitpick things. And I just really want to clarify that I'm not including the tooling in the pricing here because realistically, tooling you're only going to invest in, you know, maybe even if you're using a machine, you know, full time, if you're doing it correctly and you understand your machining, you're probably going to change a tool once, even on, on real long machining shifts, once every three days. Um, depending upon how much machining you're actually doing. I mean, I can't emphasize that enough. If you're machining eight hours a day, you could very well change out tooling, you know, daily at the end of the day if you're running the machine really quick. There's so many variables involved with that. It's really up to the end user. However, if you're machining for profit, speed is not usually the overall importance. It's how much you're making. And this is where it gets interesting. If we come over here and we add up on Google Shopping, a set of those shock towers, along with that two millimeter, um, or excuse me, that two millimeter thick brace, if we wanted to offer a bundle pack for our customers, uh, right now that cost, if we bought it retail, would be fifty dollars and eight cents. And again, that's only reflecting the price of the shipping from the shock towers. If we look over at the amount of quantity we plan on producing is 15 sets of shock towers with 15 of the actual braces. So 15 sets and then 15 of the actual uh, braces and we plan on doing that with our piece of raw material which probably is very close to doable. If we decide to come in here and set a selling point, and I'm just going to show you this because this is really interesting, if we came out $15 under the Google web search on shopping of price point, you're going to be $15 under the cheapest price point on Google and you would still be at a $369 profit per sheet. Per sheet, guys. And here's the thing that's really interesting with this. We have to take into account what material we're using because with, with any substrate, especially carbon fiber, the thicker it is, the more it costs. Okay, so if we're looking, and we did look here, and I'll bring it up one more time, this is only a 2 mil brace, and they want $13. Once again, very simple to machine, probably two tool changes, two tool changes here. Essentially what you're looking at is you using a stronger substrate, ISO 9001 certified. The quality of your products now are impeccable. You've checked your machine, everything looks good, producing perfect parts. You're offering your customer more value because, again, you're going up a mill in thickness, which makes his chassis more rigid. I do have some guys that will complain and say, well, it also makes your car heavier. But realistically, a, a one mil increase is really only going to increase a couple grams when we're using carbon fiber. The interesting thing here 
is you're offering way more value for your customer, especially if you did that with the shock towers as well. So let's say the shock towers are only two mil, and then you've got a two mil piece here, so you've taken their parts, the OEM parts, and made them better because now they're stronger and you're using a better quality component. So that in turn would actually yield you even more profitability because your customers are gonna look at that. You know, and if they see your workmanship is good and your machining is properly done, you're not going to have any problems. To go $35 a unit, if you want to make a quick sale, and I can tell you this right now, you could put these at $28 a unit. You'd still be at a profitability margin of 169.23% or a profit per sheet of $264 a sheet. Now, once again, we do have variables we're not considering here. We're not considering our tooling costs. But guys, think about that for a minute. That's your overhead is your tooling and your electric to wherever you're running your equipment. That's your overhead. Now, however many of these you'd want to run, I mean, it's up to you. What I also broke down here is I put time to produce. And I came up with an arbitrary number. I said 95 minutes. However, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a possible number. I don't know if it's exact because I've never machined these parts. But what's really interesting is even at 95 minutes to produce the 15 sets of shock towers and the 15 of those brackets, those braces, you'd still be looking at a $2.78 a minute profit. You're profiting $2.78 a minute, guys. That's incredible. And it's no manpower. Virtually, once the machine is set, she'll do her job, and you're set. You've already done your homework. You've, you've set up the software. You've got the file generated. All you're going to do is run the equipment. Um, again, it's, it's, it's pretty much done. It's a pretty much a done deal. You'll run the equipment. Everything is good. There's nothing to it. Change out your tooling. Make sure your feed rates are good. Everything here is set. This is what we're looking at, you know. And again, it's up to you. If you know all of a sudden you feel that, you know, your part, you can definitely go. The market looks good. You can go to $35 a part. Hell, maybe you can go $32 a part. And here you go. You're still at 207.69% profitability or profit per sheet is $324. Okay. So if we do the math there and we figure that out, Mathematically, there is absolutely no way you can lose with this because our efficiency and our overhead correspond with each other. You're extremely efficient because you're producing parts. Again, in 95 minutes, we'll say, hell, even, you know, we'll go three hours, whatever it takes, you're still going to be far more efficient than ever trying to cut this manually. And then on top of that, your overhead is virtually nothing. Your overhead is going to be end mills. And guys, I can tell you because I do this myself, if you purchase the end mills in bulk, usually you'll get an even better deal. So you're going to actually drop your overhead in cost because you're purchasing in bulk on your end mills. You could purchase your raw material in bulk, save you more money that way. I mean, I'm just picking an arbitrary part, an arbitrary, uh, actual even an arbitrary type of uh, of actual company and business, whether you're doing RC or you're doing another field, automotive is huge as well. I mean, the applications are endless, are endless. And when you see this, you can see just how easy it is to make money. Another good part, and I always look for these, these are like the gold mine parts. This racer's edge, whatever this is, little differential mount. And you can see here it's got the beveling in there, a little bit of beveling on the edges for the screws so that they sit flush. They want $21 for this carbon fiber mount, okay? You could look and see exactly what thickness it is. And once again, do very basic reverse engineering using a picture format, make sure everything is placed correctly, pick out the carbon fiber it matches. And again, how many, how many of those are you gonna be able to make on a 12 by 24 inch sheet? And we just do the math, guys. We're just breaking down math here. It's very, very simple. And again, like I said, this is this is the reality of it. This is really where you're going. Let's say you've gotten your efficiency down and you were able to go to 20 sets a sheet. Now you've increased your profit again, and you can see exactly where we're going with this. You look at look at the profitability, and that's only going up five more sets a sheet if it's possible. Hell, even if you went up, let's say you went up two more sets a sheet, go to 17. You're still at, then you've increased again, $388 profit per sheet, profitability 248.72%. In a 95 minute production time, you'd be profiting about $4.08 a minute. Guys, incredible. It's incredible. And I mean, this is real. Again, I picked the substrate of carbon fiber. You could do this with aluminum. You could do it with whatever substrate you want to work with. Again, wood is going to be slightly cheaper because, again, the substrate's cheaper. 
You know, I mean, it's common sense. If you're using a really cheap substrate, readily available, the thing with wood that you really make money on is finishes. If you're using exotic wood, cedars and different maples and all kinds of, you know, different finishes and you're taking the time to stain the piece and do all the work, that's where you're going to get your money out of wood. Wood is, a, is, and again, more projects. If you're doing, you know, articulate cabinets, I got guys that sell, you know, cabinets for Home Depot. They make a killing, you know, again. It just depends on you know what work you're looking at and what market you're getting into but I can tell you right now that it's just a matter of you dictating which market you want to go into and I picked RC because it's just such a wide open field I have a lot of clients that use it um, I have one client that believe it or not got so good at manufacturing his components and selling them he wasn't afraid to go to his local hobby shop and bring some of the components and actually sell them direct and I'll tell you guys, that's a great idea because the hobby shop hates importing because most of their parts are getting imported either from the distributor themselves or, you know, they're they're actually going overseas and trying to get the parts and then they have to worry about quality. A guy that's local, you can check the quality right there. If you don't want them, don't buy them. If you want them, buy them. It saves businesses tons of money. And overall, I think this is where the future will be going, you know, as we keep modifying these machines more and more for the production standards of what we're at today. I mean, that's really what it is. You can go outside and buy a Haas mill at, you know, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars and do a commercial shop and then invest three hundred thousand to open the shop. Or you could take a principle as simple as this and look at the market, what's available online. Most of these parts you can see here, two mil. Uh, most of these parts are two, two and a half mil. This chassis is two and a half mil. Two and a half mil chassis for $113 a piece, guys. $113 a piece, and Jason cut this out in six minutes. And he's got room there probably to cut another three or four more chassis. So let's just do the math, guys. I mean, this is what I'm doing here for you, and I'm breaking it down, and I think you can see where I'm going. You know, it's really up to you. Plastic parts, big money in plastic. Um, 3D printers, I have guys that ask me about 3D printers a lot. I'm not a big fan of 3D printing yet. The printers that are coming out in the near future that you're dealing with more metal substrates, there are a couple that print in carbon fiber. Um, again, it's all based on end user and software use. I still think overall routers or mills are always going to be at top of the game because of the price. If you look at how much time you invest in a router and a mill and the price and the capability of that machine, it still exceeds any 3D printer yet as far as that. You know, I mean, 3D printers use different substrates that are softer. Um, now that they are getting into carbon fiber, you will see an expansion there. I mean, on the news, I don't know if everybody's seen that, but on the news they, did, they were actually talking about printing um, synthetic bone for actual the medical field. Um, again, you know, routers have their place, uh, mills have their place, but overall manufacturing in this capacity where we're eliminating the overhead and we're eliminating, you know, what are we going to have here is overhead, guys. You're going to have your shipping. I basically broke it all down minus the tooling and your electric bill, if you really want to consider that. But you're living at home, too. So, you know, where you're living, you're working, or if you're doing it in another area, I mean, realistically, you could write that off. Again, you're a business. You're going to get a lot more write-offs when you start paying tax that way. Again, the efficiency is totally up to you where you go. You can go to a flea market. You can go to RC swap meets. There's so many venues here. And again, the parts you're producing are the same quality that they would buy anywhere else. It'll definitely exceed that of overseas quality, especially if you're, you know, meticulous at what you do, which I'm assuming you are because you're looking at purchasing a CNC. And guys, when I'm talking about CNC equipment, once again, I am talking about more of pro-grade type substrate use. I'm not looking at a, a CNC uh, chassis made out of wood, plastic, uh, you know, nylon. I'm talking about what we see here. This is the kind of substrate that you should be utilizing and again, if you're looking at anything to do with profitability, this is the chassis you want to go with. Because you can very well see how a three to five thousand dollar investment will be paid off quite quickly when you break down the math here. Okay? If like I said, if you were holding a sale and you this is your normal selling price and you drop these down on Black Friday to twenty-five dollars for that bundle, you're still gonna clear two hundred and sixty-nine dollars profit per sheet. You know, and that's before you build vendor relations with the company you're buying the raw material from. That's before you're doing anything to really offset that and leverage your raw materials even farther than that. What if you find a, what if you do decide to go overseas and buy carbon fiber? I have some guys do that. I mean, it's a, totally up to you on what you want to do. I mean, but I can tell you right now, 
that either way you do it, your profitability is going to be nuts. And if you drop the price down ridiculous like this, you're killing that market on top of the fact that the sale ratio you'd have to be able to keep up with. That's what most people actually end up finding out in retrospect is that once they figure out how much the tooling breaks down to, they can figure in and do the differential on, okay, I'm going to need to change this out once every six hours. Okay, what does that cost? That'll cost me, you know, $18, $20 a bit. Okay, 18 to $20 a bit, subtract that out of here, and that's what you're making. Do the math, guys. I mean, it's that simple. Most of your customers are going to pay for shipping. Of course, you're going to be using a web-based business, so you don't have to implement a brick and mortar. However, if you do decide to, that's totally up to you as well. I mean, whichever way you want to go, you can also do consignment shops. There's a lot of guys. I have two guys that do automotive parts and are in consignment in a lot of speed and performance shops, and they get away with that without actually paying brick and mortar prices. They can pay a fraction of that because, again, they're just having certain components on the, on the owner's shelf. So again, it's really what you're looking at, doing in what industry. But I think you get the gist of this video. And again, it's really interesting to see what is actually capable and what, what you really are purchasing when you're looking. Because a lot of guys will ask me, you know, God, or, or looking and they'll discuss, God, three to five thousand is a lot of money. No, it's not. Not with the capability you have and not with what you're looking at when you're talking about starting a business. If you look at normal business models today, you're looking easily in excess of fifty to a hundred thousand, and that's before the doors are even open and you're already in debt. These businesses, you can actually buy the equipment, have them paid off within a year, and they'll pay themselves off almost instantly. Matter of fact, I have three clients of last year that went from one machine to six machines, all three of them. And that's within a year's time because they're expanding so quick. They realize that the more machines they have, the more parts they can run. They don't have to turn the speeds up to run any faster because they're using another machine to make a part. And it's just a matter of what you want to sell. I mean, it's that simple. No one will be able to compete with you in the retail industry because if you come on Google and you're looking at where these guys are selling from, remember, they're buying from a manufacturer. And that manufacturer is tacking on his price on top of his overhead. And then on top of that, he's selling, the, the actual distributor is then selling to make money on top of that. There's no, you're cutting out so many middlemen, you have become China. The difference is you're going to be using your type of quality control. You're going to be paying your own bills. And again, it just depends on where you want to go. But hopefully with this spreadsheet, you guys get the lowdown. I, like I said, I think uh, you get the gist of where we're going with this. And again, you can dial in these numbers for anything you want, whatever substrate you want to go with. Once again, I put the raw material cost in here to reflect the 3 mil 12 by 24 carbon. It's totally up to you if you were buying aluminum or anything else. It's the same thing. How many can I fit on the sheet and what can I make? And that's that's basically it. So hopefully this has been useful. I hope you guys have been enlightened. I hope you guys see the, the facts. Again, these numbers I'm pulling are all real time. Uh, 2016 is the year, and that's the exact time that you're looking at. These numbers are not fictional. Nothing here has been embellished. Um, average shop rate by me is, uh, from typical machine shop, is about 90 to $95 an hour. Um, consider that in your pocket, you know, minus another maybe 30 bucks for tooling, depending upon how much you run your machine. That's what you're making, guys. Just depends on what parts you want to manufacture. So once again, my name is Vince. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can message me on eBay. Uh, my store is eDealers Direct, or you can message me direct, whichever way is easier for you. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm going to try to keep up with my videos. I want to do probably one a week to make it make you guys more informed and just stay in touch with my, uh, my audience. But uh, again, if you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to message me. Thanks again. Take care.